Hello, everybody. Hi there. How are you doing, Veggie? How are you doing, Yakov? Hello. Thank you. Hi. Happy Monday. <laughs> yeah. Uh, much further in the Monday for the two of you than it is for me, but not too much further. So it's a bank holiday today. I'm meant to be taking oh, it as holiday. Right. Oh, I knew that. I for completely <laughs> forgot because, yeah, our, our entire router team is uh, all based in uh, Europe. So <laughs> they're all gone today, which, of course, is the day that I have 10 million router questions. So, <laughs> of course. It's the way. Oh, why, why are you calling in? You should be enjoying the day off. Um, yeah, it sounded like there was some things needed discussing, so I thought I'd come on in anyway. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Well, yeah. Uh, hopefully we can make it a quick call, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks so much. <laughs> uh, how are you doing, Yakov? Oh, can't hear. Doing pretty good. Pretty good. Thanks. Great. Great. Sounds like you're mobile right now. <laughs> Very. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> Great. And hello, Ivan. I know Rob's around as well because I was chatting with him just a few minutes ago on the on the text chat. So yeah. I'm yeah. sure he'll be with us. Uh, absolutely. He asked me to add somebody new to the call too. Um, and I did add them, somebody from Meta. So I'm wondering if they'll be Oh, yeah, it's Sabrina. So yes. Hi, Sabrina. Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you doing? Good, good. Happy Monday. Same to you guys. Yeah. Where are you uh, located, Sabrina? I'm in New York. Okay. Yeah, East Coast time, same as me then. So you're fine for uh, for time of the day. <laughs> exactly. Just That's as long great. as it's caffeine. We're yeah, good. I yeah. just got a fresh coffee too. <laughs> I know the feeling. Ivan, how are things going for you? Uh, good. Great. And Alessia, hello. And there's Rob. OK. I think that's probably most of the folks joining today. All right, so sounds like we have some fun-filled things to talk through. Um, I missed last week's call, but uh, where do we want to kick things off? Hey, yeah, so um, I updated the the gist with an example of stream. And I think that it's mostly uh, similar to what was like previously decided before we changed the response shape. But I want to see if everyone agrees with what I was thinking. Um, so I can start sharing. Yeah. And then I want to talk about uh, what Benji and Yakov had a discussion in the channel. Um, awesome. Yeah, sorry if my answers on that, Yakov, were a bit um, ad hoc. I was doing it from mobile on and off. <laughs> doing it from holiday. Oh, no worries. So. Very helpful. <laughs> yeah, anyway, so I added this. Um, uh, stream example. Uh, there's only one here for now. Um, so this example, there's both a defer and a stream. Um, and then we have an initial count of two. So initial response gives you uh, two list items. Um, pending. This is the pending for the defer. Also, we have the pending for the stream that has its own ID. Uh, there's going to be one pending object per stream, not one for every individual item. Uh, the path points to the field. And we got the label there. Um, so in this example, I made it so that the defer resolves first. So that's here. Um, 
No, never mind. Uh, the de defer resolves last. So here's the uh, here's the next list item, and uh, that is the last one. But we're going to say that this is backed by an asynchronous asynchronous interval or something where you don't know synchronously whether the list stream list has ended yet. So we don't have the completed for it yet. And so that can come in its own payload with uh, telling you the ID. Now we do know that it's empty and that's before the defer finished resolving. So there's still a uh, has next completed. Uh, this is basically just demonstrating that you can have an object with uh, without any incremental fields in it. And then there's the deferred data is completed. Uh, I think the only, and then the incremental object for stream, uh, we had discussed this like going back last year and I'm keeping it as items and an array so that uh, there's no subpath because it's just, it's always going to be the same ID, same path as what was impending. And I, we had uh, discussed previously that we would like have a path with a index in it, but I think that it's not necessary anymore. I think the case that led us to that decision was that these defer with branching could leave you to have you know, like the same stream running independently and that the ID without the in index, it could be ambiguous, but I think it makes sense. We can just put, we wrap this, the list item in an array. We can return more than one at once if that's if the server can do that. And it just means to append it onto the previous uh, list items. And we had said, we had also discussed this, that if you have an array with a null inside, that means that the list item itself is null, but sending items with the whole thing being null, not inside an array, that means that you encountered some kind of error bubbling where the list item was non-null and that should have bubbled up higher. Yeah, so I think uh, what the only thing that's actually changing here um, besides like the ID and path moving around with everything else is the fact that we're not sending the index with that points to where we are in the list. And I think that's okay for what I said, but I want to hear if anyone disagrees or has thoughts on that. Um, uh, just on that on that point about index, I think one of the things that um, that Lee may have mentioned is that he likes the index because of uh, uh, it, it, let's say a payload for some reason is is dropped or something like that. Um, you know, putting aside whether that's uh, uh, you know would have been a concern previously. Um, because we're now, I think, deduplicating, um, uh, I think we'd have much bigger problems actually if a payload is dropped. And so we are assuming um, that all payloads um, have been sent. And so I, I don't think that concern directly applies to uh, uh, the sending the ID anymore either. Um, although there may be another issue there. But yeah, good point. Um... I think Lee as well also preferred the explicitness of having an ID. He said more information will help, you know, to, to catch if things aren't behaving correctly. Um, I have a separate piece of uh, potential thought around this. I actually like this and I think this is how we should go. But nonetheless, just to fight the other side for a moment, um, if you've got a stream of data, um, it's a little bit like a subscription, right? So you've got a subscription with a bunch of events. When you get each event, you resolve it. In the meantime, more events are still coming in. At the moment in GraphQL, we resolve that event and we send it through and then we start resolving the next one. Um, but in a stream and defer context, we could effectively receive and, and process these items individually. And it might be that item six is ready before item three is, for example. Um, so if we did have the index, we could deliver them out of order. And you can imagine, like, I don't know, uh, insurance comparison sites where they go up and they talk to all these different vendors and they know they've got this list of let's say 60 vendors um, and they've put them in an order but like different ones are coming in at different times as they're ready 
um, could be a, a thing. That said, I think we should stick with what you've proposed. Yeah, I, I was thinking that I, I I don't think I really want to like specify out of order item delivery as part of stream like for this proposal. And it sounds like something that you're going to want to opt into if you do want that. So like that's the point where opting into it gives you an index of where some additional metadata of how like the where things are in the list order. Yeah, absolutely. And opting into it is as trivial as just putting everything inside of it in a defer, right? So it's very easy to do. So it wouldn't work for um, non-object fields. But having said that still, I agree that this seems the way to go. And if we want to think of a new format later, we could even think of a, a, a different directive even to reduce confusion. Yeah, a different directive, a new argument on stream, something like that. I just one thought here, re the actual pending field and also just not passing the path in the incremental responses. Um, if I'm thinking about building some form of like client parser or client store to store this information, it gets a little non-obvious on how to use the, the pending list. So if we're not passing the path back with the incremental response, then your parser needs to maintain some form of state of what the actual pending list is and have some form of like quick look up our cache that is in kind of standard with GraphQL in order to be able to identify where this incremental payload needs to go since it's not with the incremental info anymore. And also um, there's a subtlety with if I'm building like a client side representation of uh, or client, some client side store to store the GraphQL data, um, you now kind of need to have a field state of pending to be able to service to the user because there's a subtlety between uh, having a null field value and having a missing field value, which with the pending list, we now kind of have to have a notion of for the client because it's not necessarily correct. If say you have some field that you, maybe you have the, the parent object, but you don't have the field itself, you know that's pending in a separate defer coming back. Um, passing back null to the client is technically in, incorrect, right? Because it's not a nullable field, but you'd have to basically parse the pending path as you're going to read the field and then supply some like, separate state. Um, and I was necessarily saying that's wrong. It's just slightly weird. Like there's, there's a subtlety to it of like basically letting the user know that this is still being deferred versus this is a null value versus this pure not. Yeah, definitely. I think that's that's a very good point. The way that I've been thinking about it is that the the incremental payloads on their own are not actually they're not something that the user's going to see on its own. So until you get a completed, you don't kind of apply that to your main store. And the, the completed and pending are effectively part of that. So they're this transient thing that tracks this build up change. And then every now and again, that flushes into your main like object store. It does also give you the ability, especially with the labels, for example, for you to know that a specific fragment or whatever it is, is in this pending state. So you can then correlate this, um, which obviously we've had relay in mind for, for doing that kind of thing for. Um, so, but yeah, it's definitely, you know, all this stuff is quite interesting. Are we doing some form of like is fulfilled field per la per fragment label? Because um, I know there was like previous cases where you're deferring the same data, even if the label is different, but you consider it as one object in your global store, right? If it corresponds to like the same ID. Sorry, I think I got a little bit confused in the second half of what you said there. Would oh, you mind repeating? Oh, good. There also might be subtlety. I'm new to the, the open source world, so there may be subtleties between the implementation I'm used to in this. Um, is the ID separate from the defer label? Or you are they one-to-one -one here? Uh, that's a good question. Um, the they're, reason I ask they're is not, because if they're, yeah. not, if they're, they're not, not, they're not the same? They're not one-to-one -one because you could have you could have a defer that has a nest that has a you could have a fragment that has a deferred fragment inside of it with a label and then that fragment could be used in multiple places so it would the label isn't going to be unique in that case um the combination of the path and the label should be unique um and that that's that's assuming that uh you didn't 
that's assuming that you are like passing unique labels to everything. Um, but yeah, so the ID is really, I guess, uh, an ID for the combination of the path and the label for defer. Okay, that makes sense. Right now, the proposal is is that if there is no label, um, we split out um, um, separate um, separate IDs, um, and you know that's something I'm going to raise as a potential, or I could raise it even now as you know we don't have to do that. Um, it's definitely a choice that was made, but you know so I think the some of the members here um, you know are in, are in favor of that. But the other thing we suggested was merging. Um, uh, payloads with the same label, um, even if you have a, 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 we have a validation rule to that so that the label should be unique to path, but I'm not sure if it covers if no label is used. So we could extend the validation rule to make sure that um, we don't have that situation anyway, and then we don't really have to worry about it. Or, you know, so, so there's a little bit of a subtlety there, but, and, and honestly, uh, uh, you know, uh, in general, the ID, it's supposed to be that way, I think, in most cases, that it's the path and label is unique, even if they're, or undefined, an undefined label is also unique. I think it'll mostly be used like that. Makes sense. Yeah, I think, I think the idea, the idea was that, like, if you don't want to use labels, you don't have to use them, and they don't affect the execution at all. Um, we, we do have a validation rule that says that if you are providing the labels, they have to be unique. Um, but, but yeah, uh, you also asked about, um, Dunder fulfilled, uh, or something like that, the fulfilled field. Yeah. Um, so I assume, uh, you talk with Matt, right? Matt Mahoney. Um, so one of the key things that we've been trying to build into any of the solutions that we've been discussing is making sure that fragment um like isolation is still in in place or fragment um consistency sorry um so if you were to do that with the the dunder type name field so like fragment name colon dunder type name or something like that um exactly like this in example a that should definitely that will only come through when everything for that fragment comes through that's obviously not the deferred stuff but anything that's not deferred it would all come through possibly in multiple payloads in the same incremental but it would all be in the same payload so when you then flush it through to the main store it will all be there so you can still do that kind of thing if you want to And the idea is if you basically know that you don't have a full completed, you'll, you won't flush any of that information, even if you have it basically from parse. If you don't have a completed block and it's coming in different incrementals, it's not going to go back to whatever product you store. Every payload that you receive from the server, so either that initial one with data or anyone with incremental and then a list in it, should be processed as an atomic whole. So every time you receive one of those, it is safe for you to flush it through to your main store, but only all of the changes. You can't do it halfway through the incremental list. It has to be the whole list processed at once and then flushed. Okay. Yeah, like, like this example, um, J is the field that's different from the, the parent. And if this takes a really long time to resolve, um, we're not sending like the, the type name, my fragment alias ahead of time. Um, because it, it can't be used until the whole all the fields for the fragment are are there. Oh, got it. Okay, that makes more sense. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I think that it's it's interesting the way that you said that uh, the incremental has to be an atomic piece that can be used. Um, because with defer, that means that. I think in every one of these examples, there's always a completed in every uh, in every response because we wouldn't be sending deferred data unless that it was completing a fragment. And that's not the case for stream though, where you just want the list items when they're ready. So definitely, uh, it's getting a response that doesn't have any completed is a valid payload. Um, should we talk about the error bubbling now that Benji and Yakov were discussing? Yeah, 
before we move on to that though, Rob, so everybody's okay with this? The way that you have this broken out? It sounds like everybody's aligned, right? I know Benji, you were arguing the the counter example, but you do prefer this way, right? I definitely prefer this way. It's much simpler. Okay. Yeah. Um, there is a little caveat, which isn't actually in the example. And that's what we're about to be discussing, I think, uh, where Rob said what we previously agreed is that if an item, if a null bubbles, then we'll send through items itself as null. Um, that I'm not in agreement with, but we can discuss that in as part of the next bit. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Right, why don't we just get right into it? Um, yeah. Sounds good. Do you want to start? Why? Why are you not in agreement with that? <laughs> Great question. Um, so I, I haven't fully solidified my thoughts around this, um, but at the moment, if you, so ignoring stream and defer, right? If you're in GraphQL and you get an error as part of your response, uh, Yakov, did you want to speak now or you're okay waiting for a moment? No, 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 I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Okay, cool. <laughs> get your um, head ready. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in GraphQL at the moment, without stream and defer, if an error is raised, the error will have a path, or generally will have a path, um, and that path will be such that at some point in that path, as you browse through that final data object, a field will be null, and it will reference a field that is null. And then after that point, it can still reference further bits, and you know that then the null has bubbled from that to here. With stream and defer, or at least with this current proposal that Rob and I are putting forwards, um, that's not necessarily the case. So if a null bubbles into something that would have been nullable, but has already been delivered as non-null, then effectively the whole thing blows up. And now this error that would have caused it um, would have a path that doesn't like have a null in it. So um, I actually, I gave Rob an example just now. Um, let me see if I can pull it into the chat. Did I? No, I, it's in the, um, I think I gave Yakov the example. Yeah, so in a thread in the Discord conversation, um, see if I can actually link you to the right message, copy message link. Yeah, I've sent you a link to um, the Discord message, um, but effectively I've given a, a small GraphQL query that has a undeferred query to a nullable field with an A inside of it, and then a defer with a nullable field again with always throws inside of it. So in this case, nullable is nullable, but it's already been delivered with A inside of it. Um, so if we then deliver the, if the always throws throws, we want to raise that to the nullable. We can't because we've already set it to something non-null. So now the path for that error wants to be nullable always throws, but nullable itself isn't null and always throws doesn't exist, like literally does not exist in that final reconciled object. And that's actually a, a break or a divergence from the current GraphQL behavior. So I tend to think about this quite a lot, this incremental delivery, as we've effectively got two things. We've got this final object that we're building and we've got these like transmission messages, this like metadata that we're saying, oh, here we've got a bit more data for this and here's the thing that's going to be pending here and so on and so forth, which we, we track over time. And I think that these errors actually belong to the latter of those. They belong, they're, they're kind of metadata that to do with the transport of this or uh, the resolution, but they're not part of the final reconciled object, which to me should still follow the same rules that regular GraphQL data and errors would. Um, that was quite a long explanation and I'm not sure if it was clear. So feel free to ask any questions. Um, so, so the issue is that in, in the example you wrote in the chat, uh, the error is gonna have a path of nullable always throws and previously, if you got an error path like that, you would expect nullable to be null in the response. Um, but that's not the case anymore because the nullable was delivered before that error bubbled. And so we think that's a problem for clients that are going to 
see that error path and try to make sense of it? I think it might be an issue for the way that some applications handle errors. So it could be that when they're looking at um, errors, they look at the field that it relates to. And generally they would say, oh, this field is null. Check for an error here. Um, and if there is an error here, then, then take the relevant action, display the relevant thing. But this won't be null. So it won't check for an error here. And it will go on to the next layer. And it will never see uh, no, always throws because it doesn't exist. So it would never you know, see it. So I don't think it's necessarily a, a big issue. Um, we could certainly deliver them and just tell people we're doing that now. I mean, they, they'd have to opt into using it by stream and defer anyway. So we can absolutely say there's a change in behavior here. Um, and so the way that you handle errors has to be different. I'm just saying it, it is different. Um, and we don't have to deliver it in the way that we previously discussed, actually delivering it as part of the completed record, which is already an object with ID to allow space for this additional information would be reasonable. So saying like this entire fragment has failed because of this error, rather than putting it into the actual uh, incrementals. The way I see it, the incrementals get apply applied to the final object. And this error kind of exists outside of that because the fragment actually never applied. So it's as if the fragment was skipped, in which case it's not part of the final object. And any errors associated with it are also not part of that final object. So to me, it's it's part of that divide that I have as a part of my mental model for this. Yeah. Um, so I would just say that I, um, I completely agree. <laughs> Um, I think that's what I was hinting at, like above in the Discord. Like, I think we should have an errors um, field, um, aside, meaning there should be a completed for regularly completed fragments, uh, for regularly completed deferred fragments and regularly completed streams. And um, uh, and then all the incremental all includes data that is successfully merged. And then you have an errors, um, I, I would think, array or errored or, or something, separate array for all these um, uh, things that have errored. And we can talk a little bit about the format. I guess you don't really need the null then. Um, uh, you can just uh, sort of have the uh, the error, the path and the, or the ID, I guess, in, in the implementation that already has the IDs working um, and then the error or errors. In this case, you would drop this incremental object entirely? That's what I would do personally, yes. I would drop that incremental, stick the errors directly in the completed. But this is only, to be to stress this, this is only when the null bubbling like branches past the, the defer boundary. Regular errors that happen just on fields that are then caught as part of that and still you know, part of a valid data, they would still go in the incremental. So it's only this exceptional case that we're, um, yeah. that we're changing. So I, I do want to talk a little bit just to make sure I later, like after we think about this and decide this, I guess, about about um, about those boundaries in a little bit more detail. I have an example that's a little different than like, I think it was example H. Um, and I want to make sure I understand that, but I think it's sort of separate than this. Yeah, I think I'm okay with that. Uh, with moving, dropping this incremental data and moving the errors onto the completed object, you would have to send, it's possible the same error could cause multiple fragments to um, error out. So you would be sending the error uh, more than once potentially. Hmm. That's not so desirable. I was thinking about that, Rob. Um, and in the case where they're shared, right, where they've got an overlap, um, so we've got A and B and they're overlapping, we'd effectively give you three pendings, right? A pending that represents the shared bit of A and B, a pending for A and a pending for B. The pending for A and B, the first one, that right. would be... Go no, um, I don't think we're giving pending pendings for the shared, are we? 
No, you would only. Oh have no, we're not. No, we're not. No, the... we're not. Absolutely. No, we're executing them separately, but we're not telling the user we're doing that. Yeah, you're you're completely right. So yes, the errors will go through. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, you could always um, you could always have like an array of IDs that an individual error has. Um, I mean, I think we can maybe try to work on the format. Have an array of IDs that the individual error has caused merging to. Um, you know, we might have to workshop that. I think for these kind of situations, um, we don't necessarily have to worry about optimizing this as most as it can be like this isn't the happy path right so performance here isn't as critical as it would be in the happy path um at least in my opinion and also if it's the same error multiple times it's just going to compress down with gzip to be ridiculously tiny anyway so i don't think it's a huge concern and i think they would all be delivered together as well so they'll go out as part of the same payload so again gzip is going to compress the hell out of that um, so I, I don't think it's a big concern. Yeah, I think it makes sense. Um, if you did have the same error, it, it is, I think it is a little weird because the, this like error is not really, uh, corresponding to this data. If it was something lower than the top level. And it could be more than one ID. So I think it makes sense for, I think it makes sense to, to move it. So I'll, I'll update this example. I'll remove this entirely. I'll put errors here and I'll make another example for the same thing with stream. So that's like, if the stream, if an error, if the, if the list item in a stream is non null and there is an error in there, so the case where we said items would be null. Also, we don't need this at all anymore, and we can have completed with the ID and the errors in there as well, right? Yeah. Yes. I think that the stream case warrants further discussion, though. The defer case is relatively straightforward because effectively you deliver nothing. Right. But the stream case is problematic because you've already delivered some stuff and then you stop. And that stopping is one of those things where we can't retroactive. Like if we were to resolve that in GraphQL, then that field, that entire field, the list field would become null. But now it's not null. It's a list with like eight items in it, for example, that should have had 20, but item nine through. Um, so that is potentially something that we need to flag very clearly to consumers that are using these these graphql apis with a stream on a on a field to make them aware that just because it has nine items on it you should check for an error to know whether nine is complete or whether there could be more i think it's a, a little bit subtle so you think it's just something that needs to be like clear, clearly called out in the spec um not that we need, I, I'm not sure what other behavior we could do. Another option, and, and just mooting this as an alternative, um, is we could just say that putting stream on a field automatically makes the, the fields within it nullable. Effectively, they're their own independent little null boundaries. So then you could get nulls in it. Item nine would be null, and then 10 through 20 would all be fine again. Um, I don't think we should do that, but it is put an, an option. Other than that, I'm not sure what other options we have. Maybe we could actually deliver an item with that field set to null and then just have the client overwrite it. But again, we don't like this idea of like giving the user data and then taking it out from under their feet. So I don't yeah. think we should do that either. Yeah, I, I'm almost positive we discussed that option when we were discussing like, uh, the stream payload with items being in an array. And it was like, it was the group decision then to return items null, but with the new response shape, I think that, I think it's, it's the same to just put the items, the errors inside completed and 
yeah, I feel like everyone is okay yeah. with that, but it definitely will make sure it's called out. We also have the case where an async iterable throws. And so, um, meaning in terms of declaring a field nullable, we, we, you know, we, we do have another case where the async iterable throws. And I think we will actually have to double check how that's dealt with in the non-stream context, but we haven't released that yet. And so I think we call, uh, do we send an index of the path that didn't arrive and just call that as an error? I mean, I, I think that yeah, I guess it's possible for an async iterable to throw after you've already received some items. Yeah, so if, for example, you're querying from a database and the database gets shut down whilst you're streaming the results from it, then that would be a situation where this could occur. Um, I don't, I definitely don't think it should use like the next index because we don't know that the next index is definitely going to exist. It would imply the existence of something that may not actually exist. Um, so I think much better to just use the field itself, the, the list field, and just give an error there. Kids shouting in the background. Um, so yeah, I think we should just put an error directly there and it would go as part of this completed again. So a null bubble and the async iterator termination, both of those would cause the um, the completed with errors. Yeah, so currently what we have merged in GraphQL.js, I, I, I believe is... Um is uh is forget you know forget stream meaning we've enabled async generators now in the javascript imp implementation of non-streaming queries so we have an example in the on the list dash test um file where we um where we do exactly that i guess we say we we actually add a null to um to the list that is returned uh, even though you know we're not sure whether that exists or not exists, but we just put in like a pseudo null value and an error with that. Um, so that's uh, currently how we deal with it here. Uh, there, um, that might take some some thinking because basically what we're saying is we're now with async iterables. We now have a situation where there, even without stream and defer, we have uh, an error that isn't really located to a path per se. Um, I mean, I think the equivalent is that I feel like for, for non-streaming and async interval, like if that, if that does happen, you probably should null out the, the whole list, right? Yeah, that definitely seems like a field error to me. The async iterable represents the field and it's errored. Mm -hmm. we, we haven't released that behavior, I don't think. Um, Rob, do, do you know? No, it's not. It's still in the uh, alphas or betas, whatever we're on in GraphQL.js. I mean, I, they both seem sort of like reasonable choices, but I do agree that what what we're saying now is probably more correct, although it gives you less of uh, partial data. But I'm not sure how we could represent it in the old format. I mean, we have a lot of choices now with the new format, but with the non-streaming format, I'm not sure what choices we have. Uh, I've been Beyond what's been raised. Yeah. Well, even with the old format, we still have the items items inside an array so we could send no, items no. with a null right no no i mean um i mean uh, i mean i mean for the we're gonna we for the non-streaming case meaning not with incremental delivery we have an async generator that may null so we're saying in the non-streaming case currently graphql js uh you know put stack tax on a null but we're saying now and i i think that's right that, that that's not quite correct um so if in the non-streaming case we're going to change that to null the whole list, um, uh, I guess, you know, we would just have to make that a line. Um, uh, 
yeah, I think we should probably fix that in GraphQL.js. I, I can talk to you. We can talk later about it. Yakov, are you happy with what you were discussing in the chat now? Do you do you feel like you understand and agree, or like we've discussed everything that needs to be discussed? Oh, thank you so much. Um, so so I just want to make sure there was one um, case that I have in the tests for the implementation that I'm working up that I, I I'm not a hundred percent sure that. Um, that it aligns. Um, so should I show it, do you think, in the Discord chat or in the test files, or should I just paste it into the chat here? Do you want to share your screen? Um, yeah, let's try that. Let's see. Um, Okay, so I'm sharing my my Discord, I think. You are. Um, do, do, do. Okay, so the question is this query, right, that we see over here. Um, and, um, and I'm not talking about a, 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 a slow, I'm so we're basically talking about um, a non-nullable fields that return null and null bubbling. And the question is, is, is how far is how exactly the null bubbling will work. So we're looking at a, a, a query with um, two different defers with with two different paths, but they overlap. Um, uh, the the non the problem field is going to be non null error field, and they overlap. Uh, and uh, C is is nullable. And so normally, you know, without stream without defer, it would everything would bubble to C would just be null. Um, and the question is, in this case. Let's say let's say the first um, the first defer uh, resolves um, first. So my algorithm uh, initially gave um, gave this as the response, um, meaning so the C is going to eventually. We were talking about how um, everything is going to be, you know, we have it, it, the non-overlapping portions are sent separately. Um, so. A uh, is sent, well, A is actually not deferred at all. So A is sent first. And then um, at the path of A, uh, we have uh, some field is sent separately. It's only part of one of one of the defers. And then we have B and C is also only a part of one of the defers, um, but it can't, but it overlaps um, between the two fragments. So it's sent as a separate one because it belongs to both. The overlapping fragments are sent separately, and then boom, we hit we hit our null. So my question is, um, my question is if this is actually correct. Uh, so then, what happens to D? D can't be sent because um, uh, because at this point C has nulled, and so D is just suppressed or filtered. And I want to make uh, make sure um, uh, right now it says completed that both of them are completed, but etc. So is this what we envisioned? Because in this example. We do have some overwriting. I mean, we talked a little bit about how the constraints, uh, one of the constraints that we wanted is only um, simple merges. And so each of these incremental data records or incremental payloads, each of these items in the incremental array can just be overwritten. Um, uh, and normally when there's no null bubbling, it, should, um, it shouldn't really ever actually overwrite something. Meaning that thing at ABC should really have been given a value for non-null error field, but because it was null, um, it's going to um, it's going to uh, uh, potentially overwrite uh, what we have at C. Now we just said that we're actually going to take this out, this payload entirely out, this third payload over here, and so this payload is no longer going to appear, right? And so I think one of the options then is to is to that everything would be similar to this, but just send the first two incremental payloads. But I'm not sure, again, still, if that's really what we want, because then um, C didn't send non-null error field. It did, sorry, that, that defer fragment is not actually complete. Like, let's say you have, like, someone's using a label on it or something, and they're testing to see if everything is filled. They would expect it to be actually complete. 
uh, and it's actually missing non-null error field. It wasn't able to be successfully delivered. Everything, uh, so so I imagine, I'm just not sure if when we talk about null bubbling yeah, this... beyond the fragment. Yeah, go, so maybe you have the answer already. Yeah, th this is not exactly what I was expecting. I would expect that you get D um, sent in this scenario. So, um, so basically, like you have, uh, you have some field being executed for the first defer. You have B and C being executed for the two both defers. Then you have D being executed for the second defer and non-null error field for the first defer. Um, and you have you're holding on to like the references for all of those. And when uh, non-null error field nulls, that stops you from sending any of the payloads that go with the first defer and send send completed there and the errors for it. But it shouldn't impact the fields that are in the second defer. That should still get uh, delivered completely, right? So I, I I don't know. I mean, I think that's up for discussion. So I think what you're saying is definitely like I'm scrolling down a little bit more. Should it, well, you know, this is this option I think is true. Meaning you're saying, again, we're not actually going to send data null anymore. We're going to put this in a separate errors field, but you're saying that deferred fragment shouldn't send anything. And I definitely agree with that. Um, and so that I'm hundred percent okay with and actually makes, makes my, you know, cause I, I makes that concern go away. I don't think we should partially deliver a fragment. Um, and so, but now you're saying if you actually don't send that whole fragment, you can send D. Um, even though you know kind of that there's a problem with D because it, sort of um, because a null bubbled up to C and C only comes down from D. So, uh, yeah, you know, I think it's just worth discussing. I see what you're saying, um, but I wonder what the group thinks. It's so I, Yeah. I actually um, spent some time on Thursday and Friday uh, rewriting my spec edits. They're not ready to present yet, um, but I know how this would work in my algorithm. Um, so yeah, what you originally proposed um, or what you originally described breaks the the fragment consistency that I think is, right. is one of our governing things. So right. we both agree that that shouldn't uh, be the case, right? Awesome. Um, so the solution is is a little bit interesting. Um, what effectively happens in, in the algorithm that I've written up is um, that you take the shared fields um so the if you if you call the two defers a and b um you effectively have this invisible extra defer a b that is the combination of both of them so that is the the b and c field so those that would get executed first and then once it's executed a and b would execute in parallel they'd race and whichever one of those completes first would go along with um uh with the shared a b payload if it doesn't break the fr fragment um boundary now this is where things get really interesting in this case if you had this uh which one was the one that threw non-null uh, error field yeah so if you have the first of her, a resolve first what would actually happen is BC would have been evaluated and C will be an object. Then A will execute and some field will be fine and non-null error field will throw and that would try and violate C. But C is effectively already delivered. It's not already delivered, but it's seen by the algorithm as already delivered because it's shared between both A and B. So that would then cause the entire of the A fragment to have a non-null uh, exception. Then we'd go on to B. B would resolve the D field, which presumably resolves without error because happy path we generally prefer. Um, in which case, the AB shared, which is the BC bit. <laughs> so many letters. Yeah. I should have chosen yeah. X, Y, and Z. Um, yeah. <laughs> so the, the BC would come through and then the D would come through and that would be fine. Then we'd say completed two. And previously we'd have completed one with an error, which was effectively that the the C couldn't be made null. Um, but yeah, there's there's weird, there's slightly odd behaviors around this, but I think they are the ones that we want because they enable more of the happy paths to happen. I.e., 
if C resolves to something that is not null, then if we've got a whole bunch of defers off of that, one of those going null shouldn't stop all the rest of them from running. We want to prefer the happy path. Yeah, I think I had wrote, I wrote at the top of that gist that deferred fragment data will be returned as null if a null bubbles to a field that's previously delivered, but that's not totally accurate. Um, uh, because if the null happens before another defer that's happening in parallel, so I think that needs to be reworded. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I I agree with the way Benji described it. I think we described the same thing, but you described it better. I think it would be a lot easier to understand in text as well. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I, I, I think I think both of you, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's fine. Um, but just to make sure I understand, B and C are still delivered separately than D, even though there's only one fragment, because if it wouldn't have nulled, Right, it it you know we don't change we don't change the fragment shapes, right? Yeah, because those shapes of the incremental payloads are figured out basically like before you start executing things, and then once you do start executing them, then uh, we're, like you would have to like try to reassemble them back into a different shape if that was the case, right? At like before you deliver them. Like with, like with this algorithm, you just like, when you do collect fields, you pretty much know like what those incremental payloads order are. Matter. Yeah, and I don't think we want the order of execution for the fields itself to affect that. Okay, that's very clarifying and I think that makes sense, yeah. This is definitely the trickier area of it, though, I think. So, great. Uh, is there anything else we want to go over in this meeting? Yeah, so for the, we have the primary working group on Thursday. I have a PR to add uh, add this to the agenda. Um, I think my plan is that I'll probably show a few of the slides that maybe Benji made or something similar of like, these are like just a whole background of like how we got into this very big rabbit hole of, um, and then I'll, yeah, like uh, about response amplification, stuff like that. Then I'll like show this proposal. I'll go through these examples and we'll see if we have feedback from the bigger group. And I'll update the stock to put the uh, the null bubbling stuff that we talked about today. That sounds great. Thanks for doing all that, Rob. All right, awesome. Thank you, everyone. On, on with Monday. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks all. We'll talk again soon. Take care. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye.